Today's the day, guys. The old faithful gub mount is getting retired. I've got a whole bunch of quad lock goodies here, and we're going to upgrade my phone mounts. This old gub phone mount, guys, it's the original. It's the OG. I had this back on the 500 EXT, so it's a good five plus years old, and it's done pretty well. It doesn't really resemble what it looked like when I bought the thing. It's been modified that much. I've changed this here to be able to do it up tighter. I've got this spacer in here so you don't have to crank it all the way in when you're not using it. I've added this extension bar here so it clears my tank bag. It's yeah, it's really not the original gub mount at all anymore. It's a bit of a hybrid. Now don't get me wrong, it's it's been good. It's my phone's never fallen out of this thing. It grips it pretty well. But it's such a pain to get in and out. If I want to stop somewhere and take a photo with my phone, and then of course putting it back in there. Well, it's extra hard with one hand while you're filming here, but um, it is really solid. Um, it doesn't have any vibration dampening, of course. So you pull up, you want to take a photo, you've got to unscrew the damn thing. Get it out. It's a little bit of a pain, and because of that, I don't take as many photos as I would if I could get it off easily, or if my phone was in my tank bag and easy to grab out. And of course, it's kind of an ugly looking thing when you don't have a phone in it. So I've got a couple of quad lock options here. I've got the uh, old faithful handlebar mount. This one's the handlebar mount pro. It's made of aluminium alloy and is all black. That looks cool and probably a bit stronger than the stock one. And I've also got the mirror mount, which I'm hoping will be a good fit for the uh, top bar across the top of the dash on the T7. So we'll check that out. Got the vibration dampener, of course, to save your phone's camera. Um, I've got a little knuckle adapter, which is essentially uh, a 180 degree elbow joint might not need that but we'll see and finally the universal adapter because quad lock don't actually make a proper phone case for my phone but that's okay this will do the job all right so first things first we'll have a look at what you get with these two mounts all right we have some stickers instructions warranty card so that's the handlebar mount pro it's all um, aluminium alloy screw allen key and different bar size adapters and with the uh, mirror mount, we get more stickers and instructions. And that's your um, mirror mount, and also you get another Allen key in there. And some more adapters, so if you've got different sized bars, different adapters. Cool. Alright, so I'm going to remove the old gub mount first, so I can find out what adapter size I need for this particular handlebar. Now it would probably be a good idea to remove the tank bag while I'm doing this, but I do want to make sure that the new mount is going to clear the tank bag when the bars are turned, so I'll be leaving that on for now. Now the beauty of the gub mount, even though it's you know, not perfect, it was only about $12 I think, so for 12 bucks it's lasted me a long time. Yeah, she's a bit of a Frankenstein. So the Allen key you get with these is a 3mm. I've actually got a 3mm T-bar here which I'll use because it's a bit easier. All the bolts on these are pre-thread locked as well which is good. They do actually have printed in here what sizes of, of bars each adapter is for. I think I'll need the uh, 1 and 1 8 fat bar. Yeah, that'll be the one. There are actually little locators in there. Oh, that is a perfect fit. So now put the screw in. Might do it up tight just yet. I want to be able to rotate that to where I want it. So also you can undo this bolt here as well if you want to adjust the angle of the arm. You can also put uh, the head on at whatever angle you prefer. Thinking it might be a good idea to put the, the release lever on this side so it's easier to get at the brake reservoir in the way there um, but I'll be able to change that later if I don't like it um, you can even have it pointing up that way if you prefer I guess I haven't really used a quad lock before so it's all a learning experience for me but anyway you need to remove this thing here I guess it just holds the, um, the screw in place during shipping before I attach the actual head I'll show you guys how to mount the vibration dampener so you get another allen key with this one and there's a bolt inside there so basically you just um, use your allen key down through the middle there 
You can also rotate this thing to whatever orientation you like. Now guys, I'm probably not going to use the vibration dampener on my phone. It's a bit of a cheaper model. It doesn't actually have stabilization of the camera, so um, vibrations don't really worry it. And of course, your quad lock head just bolts straight on the top of that. And uh, there's your vibration dampening. So if you've got a more expensive phone, I think the iPhones are more prone to damage from vibration. But um, yeah, definitely worth getting the dampener. It's the same sort of scenario with the knuckle adapter here. Looks like you actually have to remove one side of it here. And then we can bolt that piece on with the provided screw. It's all really well made stuff this, like it just, um, just goes together real nice. And uh, apparently quad lock was designed in Australia, so that's pretty cool. This piece goes back in here. I will probably use this piece guys because I like having that bit of adjustment plus it gives me a little bit more height off the bars and of course your head goes on top there and it's pretty easy to loosen off this side allen key here if you need to adjust this angle you can spin it around so that your adjustment goes side to side if that's what you want so I still haven't done anything up super tight yet guys I'm just sort of getting everything into place see where I want it now we'll head back over to the workbench and uh, get the uh, universal adapter stuck on my phone. As I mentioned before, uh, this is a cheaper phone. It's a Samsung Galaxy A14. It is like a, a fairly new model, but it is the budget line. Quad lock only seemed to make cases for the S model uh, Samsung, the more expensive ones. And of course, all your iPhones and some other brands i'm pretty sure but that's okay because i've got a case for this one that will be compatible you can't use a case that's fully tpu um, thermoplastic urethane it won't stick to rubber silicon all that sort of stuff this case is actually tpu around the edges but the back is actually hard plastic so the adapter should stick fine onto that i'm gonna have to remove my uh, glitter mad dog sticker there unfortunately but um, that's okay stickers off just giving us a really good clean up with uh, breaking parts cleaner they actually provide a little sachet here with a rubbing alcohol soaked cloth in there to clean it so that's cool and childproof packaging <laughs> so this universal mount does use the 3m vhb very high bond double-sided tape you want to position this as close to the center of your phone case as possible Probably a good idea to mark the center line with a ruler. The hell is half a 170, 50, 85. It's all very technical. Okay, so we have our central points marked. The adapter does actually have lines on there in the center, so it should be pretty easy to line up. I'll just try and clean that again without rubbing off my marks. Now these universal adapters are only single use guys, so you want to get this right the first time. Make sure you get that quad lock riding up the right way too. <laughs> now you don't have to be precise with this guys, but I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. I like to do it right. Okay, so instructions say, so better look at the instructions, eh? <laughs> well, I've done it right. Give it a good bit of pressure, clean off the pen marks. And that is the universal adapter installed. It's a little bit of extra bolt to the back of your phone, but um, yeah, it's not gonna bother me too much. All right, all done. Let's go see if I can attach it to the, <laughs> to the mount. Okay, so it is gonna take a little bit of getting used to uh, being able to click this in and out real quick. But uh, one thing you wanna sort of be aware of when you're mounting this obviously is things that may be in the way when you're twisting it on. So my tank bag here is kind of in the way if I'm putting it on um, in this orientation. All this stuff will just be a bit of trial and error to get it positioned where I want it. But um, obviously, you know, once you've got everything clear and out of the way, very easy to click on and off. Obviously that's not a very good angle. Um, I want it rotated back a bit, but I'm gonna have to uh, figure that out.
Anyway, firstly, I want to try the uh, mirror mount up here on the um, GPS bar on the T7 because that might be a better option for some of you guys. All right, I have my little collection of adapters here. It's too big. That will be the one. It says 12 millimeter. So yeah, that sounds about right. Pretty simple again. We do have to remove the head to get to the screw to mount the actual base. And do that one. So you want to try and get that as close to the middle as you can. It might be best to have that up like so. And take our phone here. Obviously, same as always, on a 45 degree angle. Try and keep my hands out of the way. Click it on, done. Yeah, that actually works quite well. I'll rotate that down a bit. So to remove it, obviously very easy with it pointing up like that. To push in, rotate, off, put it back on. Boom. So yeah, that's um, actually not too bad up there, guys. Still you know, quite easy to reach. I thought it might be a bit far away to reach to you know, to use the phone, scroll the map or whatever, but um, yeah, that's that's pretty nice up there, I like that. Yeah, I'm going to have a bit more of a play around with the uh, handlebar mount, see if I can get that in a spot that I like it, and I'll, uh, I'll let you know how I end up. Alright, so after a fair bit of faffing about, I have um, decided what I'm going to do. Now, I would use the mount up here if I didn't do YouTube. I actually do like it up there, it's easy to get the phone on there easy to see it's sort of at eye level and of course I could easily run a charger from my charging port down here straight to here rather than over to the handlebars only problem is being a youtuber um, having the map up here is probably not a good idea because sometimes uh, I do inadvertently end up in places that I probably shouldn't be and uh, you know if the wrong people see on the map where I am uh, it could be problematic for me so I do prefer to have it mounted down here but that is really the only reason is I don't want the maps to be visible in my videos all the time. For most of you guys running T7s, um, you know, this is probably the cheapest and easiest option. That combined with the vibration dampener, if you have, uh, you know, a phone with a susceptible camera, that would be the go. For me though, I'm going to stick with the handlebar mount, so I like it as well. It's really good. I'm used to having my phone down here. I've got my charging cord set up here, ready to go. It's down out of the way, it's not going to be in my footage all the time. Now I was kind of struggling with getting it on here because of my tank bag until um, old Dum Dum realised that you can do it from any 45 degree angle so it doesn't have to be that way where the tank bag's in the way. I can also stick it on from this side to get that landscape orientation and easy peasy. Clearing my brake master cylinder there, easy reach for my um, charging cable there and it's it just touches the tank bag there at full lock but it's not it's not going to be a problem so all good very easy to get off as i said i'll turn this around so it's up you want that to the side of your phone i think so it's easy to push on if it's behind the main body of the phone it's a little bit hard to get in there but um being like that i've already sort of gotten used to attaching this and taking it off it's really not that difficult the main thing is you want to have that 45 degree angle if you're off a little bit um, it's not going to go on, so yeah, you've got to get used to that 45 degree angle, find it, boom. So I've actually gone through and re-thread locked all these bolts, because I did do a fair bit of adjusting and, and mucking around. So I've got everything locked in place now. I'm still using the elbow adapter here, just to give me a bit more clearance between my phone and the master cylinder here. Without that, I think it would be a bit of a pain. Guys, if you like your phone in portrait mode rather than landscape. I do prefer my phone in landscape, but obviously with the quad lock you can easily attach your phone in portrait mode as well. For me on the T7 down here it's going to be a bit of a problem clearing the tank bag. You know my charger plug will get you know mounted up turning the bars so you have to figure something else out if you liked uh, having it in portrait mode. You can have it in portrait mode up here of course. It's going to cover up a bit of your speedo but you know, it works. They do actually sell little spaces as well, so if you need a bit more clearance, so you know, you can customize this stuff pretty well. If you really want to have your phone in portrait mode, I'm sure you'll figure out a way to do it. it you know, without this tank bag here in the way, it'd be no problem whatsoever anyway. You know, it's just, it's just the tank bag that's getting in the way of that. But uh, luckily for me, 
I like it in landscape mode. So yeah, I'm going to call that job done. Quad lock installed. It's really nice gear, guys. This is quality stuff. Aussie designed, of course. Both of these are really good options for the Tenere 700. And I mean, they're going to work with just about every bike that's got handlebars. And <laughs> if you've got a you know, GPS mount bar up here, that one might be your, your go-to. Yeah, it wouldn't be a proper video without some kind of road test. Um, so far, so good. Obviously, you know, this is an adventure bike. It's not a mountain bike that I'm throwing off cliffs and <laughs> getting too crazy with, but uh, so far, so good. Seems good. You know, no dramas. Unfortunately, the quad lock can't help me with this bullshit, though. Which, uh, we're going to have to find an alternate route, I think. So, yeah, like, um, taking it on and off. As I said, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but really, it's, um... No, no dramas whatsoever. A lot easier than the old gub mount, that's for sure. And you know, solid as. Here's some good tests for the quad lock. See if any of these sticks knock it off, <laughs> knock my phone off. Sh shouldn't be. Should be pretty protected. Good. Ow, where it is there. Unfortunately, my nose is not protected from the sharp lantana shit. One thing I thought I might quickly mention, guys, is uh, the the mount for up here. Now, I know my mate Steve runs his quad lock with his phone on it up there, and he hasn't had any dramas with it, but um, another guy, uh, one of my Patreon guys, Jim, um, he said he had his phone up there hit uh, a large washout or something, and uh, this bracket here couldn't take the weight of the phone as well and broke the actual bracket down below so it wasn't a failure of the quad lock it's just that uh, this bracket up here may not be strong enough depending um, you know on how heavy your phone is or whatever mine's obviously been zip tied together here already after a crash <laughs> so mine probably wouldn't be able to handle it but um yeah just something to be aware of as i said steve had no worries with his up there but on uh, any huge impacts um, could break your thing oh so you may be better off with the the handlebar mount all right <laughs> let's keep going through this shit ah. note to self do not ever come through this way again this is this is a like serious lantana branches man there's some big f thick ones they hurt me no, I don't think you can get much more better testing for the quad lock than this shit holy moly I'm just trying to turn my bike around here this lantana is next level <laughs> me so there you have it, the quad lock road test, well more of an off-road test, um, it passed with flying colours, it's pretty much the only thing that didn't break on this freaking rod, the quad lock is still fine, the phone never came off, the battery for my GoPro came off, my Ford Sports Bluetooth thing broke off, quad lock and phone all good, <laughs> so very happy with it, very happy with it guys, um, I love the quad lock, let's see if I can put it on there left handed, oh. No worries. All I've got to remember to do now is to unplug the freaking USB cord from the phone before I try and take it off. I did that yesterday and uh, yeah, probably nearly broke the cord. So yeah, as always guys, 10% discount at uh, the Quadlock website. I'll put the link in the description. 10% off with the code MVDBR. Get on it. If you don't have a Quadlock yet, you probably should. I probably should have had one a long time ago. But um, as I always say, better late than never. Quality Aussie design gear. Can't beat it. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you Quadlock for sending me some sweet gear. See you guys on the next video. Cheers.